You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping SmackDown Live from September 12th. Yes, the return of Vince McMahon after four years of not being on SmackDown. Yeah. I I don't you thought know. It was longer than that. I did. Uh, um, I don't I don't know what it was back in 2013. I guess I don't know. That would be four years ago. No, I mean I can't think of anything that would there. make like give him a reason to go or be on SmackDown. That's my point. I don't know. So. That's a good question. Yeah, especially considering the fact that they were taped. And oh yeah, it's true. On TV for a yeah. while. It's true. He hasn't been on uh, yeah. in a while. Before that, even, probably. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. We uh, open the show with Kevin Owens basically uh, talking about what he had mentioned last week and that he was going to sue and everything. Yeah, he's so, out He's out for blood. Yeah. So he came out and said the reason that he never fought back was because he apparently respects authority, which yeah. is a pretty, uh, pretty good one. Yeah, well, considering the fact that you know, it's likes, Kevin Owens. He likes to stretch the truth. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, basically that was the reason why he was suing everybody. Um, he says that he's going to make a whole bunch of improvements to uh, SmackDown. Uh, first, he's going to fire Sami Zayn. Well, of course. Which, not a surprise there. Yeah. And uh, then he wants Tom Phillips and Byron Saxon to wear one suit together. Yes. So, uh, well, because he, he said the same suit, and yeah. he's like, "No, no, no! I don't mean the same two thing. similar <laughs> looking suits. I mean one suit at the same time." Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, then he goes, "You know that uh, that show, The Fashion Files, that all you fans love? Canceled." <laughs> um, so yeah, that got a, a big uh, boo from the crowd. Yeah. Um, then he says, "All right, let's get this over with." And he calls out Vince. And then uh, Shane McMahon's music hits, but out comes Dolph Ziggler. That was, that was this was a pretty good swerve. Yeah, I that's like true. It. As he comes out doing his uh, little swivel swinging of his uh, wrist and everything. Yeah. And then he's like, mm, I'll throw that entrance in the maybe pile. And him and Kevin were going back and forth about it. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, what? I forget what he said. That uh, he's like, oh, you were the only person that I was hoping or. That would have been okay coming out with that entrance music or something like that. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, that was a funny uh, segment. Yeah. And then uh, Daniel Bryan comes out, and he, uh, he basically says, you know, Owens, enjoy your fun while you're having it now because uh, it's not going to last. And then Owens is like, you know what, Daniel? I'm going to make you a janitor. Mm-hmm. Which I don't remember the context of that. Or is well, no, just, he, he said that, don't worry, you'll have job security. Oh, I'll that's make right. you the janitor. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that is right. And then... Uh, Daniel Bryan was like, don't worry, Vince will be here soon. Yes. So, uh, you really didn't care that much for the opening segment? or No, it was, it was fine. It yeah. was just, I, I don't think this, because I had said earlier that it felt like the beginning wasn't great. I don't think this was the problem. No? No. I don't I don't remember why I thought that, actually, not, now that I look back on it. But maybe the Rusev thing was really what bothered me. That didn't come till later. Oh, no, it was after the first match. Okay. Yeah. Very so, good. That could be what it was. Yeah. I don't know. Um. But yeah, so uh, up first we had uh, AJ Styles versus Ty Dillinger. Yeah, it's the U.S. Open Challenge that was only open to one person. Yeah. Um, so that was a good match. Yes. Uh, they gave Ty a lot of offense in the match. Mm-hmm. And they he, actually kind of teased that he could win, mm-hmm. which was yeah. a little surprising. Yeah. Um, I think he had control basically through the entire commercial break, mm-hmm. which we got the split screen, which is officially my favorite thing in the world now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, it's 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 such a pain with those commercials mm-hmm. because the commercials are never for anything good. <laughs> if I liked the commercials, it'd be a That'd different be a story. Thing. Yeah, I mean the Sonic commercials are pretty funny. Oh, I love the Sonic commercials; <laughs> those are the best. Uh, and then uh, I, yeah, because I think I tried to mute it to watch it, and I was like, it just it's just not the same. All right, it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. So I'd rather they uh, just go back to the old regular commercials yeah i don't want to know what's going on well not even that the, but. the best part is that they always show you what happens before the commercial mm. but they never show you what happens during, during the, the commercial, commercial. yeah or unless it's something like big but otherwise yeah. they just completely pretend like it doesn't yeah. happen anyway so yeah, there's really I mean, really no point recently we've had matches that just started and right went right to commercial break and mm. it was like really yep so uh, whatever but yeah so um 
So at one point, AJ went, went and set up for the uh, phenomenal forearm, mm -hmm. and Corbin ran oh, out yeah. and got up on the apron. So AJ hits him with the forearm. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of just rolls out of the... Yeah. Well, he was never in the ring, but he no. rolls to the outside mm -hmm. and stays there for the remainder of the match, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, well, it was pretty... Th this didn't last long after. Oh, yeah. The there wasn't a lot, a lot of time no. after that. No. But. Uh, Ty ended up setting AJ up for the tiebreaker, mm -hmm. and he successfully hit it. But yes. AJ kicked out at two. Mm -hmm. um, AJ locked in the calf crusher after a little struggle back and forth and yeah. ty tapped out like he did what two weeks ago or was uh, it last week i think it was two weeks yeah it was ago. two weeks because last week ty and corbin yeah faced each other <laughs> yeah um so but yeah at that point uh corbin attacks both of them mm. he threw like aj into the crowd and aj got like stuck between chairs like dangling his feet in the air yeah it's uh, different corbin's got to be more careful yeah uh. um he hits the uh, end of days. On... Well, he hit Ty, too. Yeah, he hit... He well, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he yeah, said yeah. he attacked okay. both of them. And then he hits AJ with the uh, end of days. Mm -hmm. And I guess Ty kind of just disappeared. Just yeah. Um, and grabs the mic and tells AJ that he's going to be accepting the open challenge next week. Yeah. Um, AJ should say there's no open challenge. I was going to say, there's not like he has to do it. It's true. So it's just kind of funny. Yeah, so, I mean... It would have made like it would have been cool had Corbin help Dillinger win, uh -huh. and then Corbin take the belt off Dillinger, and mm -hmm. then we still got AJ and and Corbin in the Hell in a Cell just because he knew he couldn't beat AJ for it. Uh huh. So I think that would have been a good way to do it. I guess I don't know. They're not really big on doing things cool. Very good. That is true. Um, and yeah. let's do this the most generic way possible, please. Pretty much. Yeah. We're gonna leave the, we're gonna leave the uh, the good ideas for the future. Yeah, <laughs> the unforeseeable future. Yep. Yeah, it's so. like WCW's ideas. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Yeah. Drew Drew Bagwell on a pole match on a forklift. Remember? Forklift match. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess a pole would be a little. That would be an interesting match. <laughs> anyway let's move on yeah move on to your favorite segment of the night i, I guess so yeah. so uh rusev gets interviewed about his trip to bulgaria that apparently everyone knew about i don't know i guess you didn't i didn't know i didn't know, I didn't know where he went yeah. either yeah i just knew he was gone yeah so uh he said that he went home as a loser mm-hmm and he his family needed to get away from his humiliating loss well no well yeah because he got humiliated from losing so quickly to randy orton mm -hmm. he went home a loser and his family saw him as such yep and now he has to come home and make or yeah, he has to come back and take out a legend or something like that yes I, I, whatever I mean, that I means like, eh? what is he gonna be the new legend killer well you gotta we just gotta figure out who he's referring to uh, it's not randy orton no because he lost to randy orton but who would be considered a legend maybe not necessarily on smackdown but just in wwe right now oh uh, it's gonna beat up dean malenko no <laughs> fit finley there you go uh rick flair yeah yeah that, that's the the best thing to do let's beat up old men yeah let's make them bleed on tv it's true <laughs> give them heart attacks terrible person hmm? um yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, it really doesn't make any sense. No, this will probably end up uh, like the Goldust storyline and just go to the wayside. Or Rusev's suggestion that he's going to get a title shot at Money in the Bank. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If I don't get my title shot, I'm not coming back. And he didn't get his title shot, and yet here he is. Yep. <clears throat> oh, man. So, yeah. Up next, we had uh, Jinder Mahal come out for, I guess something he just wanted to talk like he usually does he had something to say he did no so that, is, that not, is true it's not like he came out and just like okay this is my segment i am allotted this amount of time no matter what <laughs> so let me speak in, in a matter of you know speaking he kind of did well that's technically how wrestling works I, so i understand that but so yeah anyway he comes out and he basically says he's gonna play mind games with shinsuke and get inside of his head and then he brings up pictures of Shinsuke on the Tron. Yeah. And there was Shinsuke in his uh, weird facial expressions. And, He's a very uh, colorful person. Yeah, that's 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 a good description. Um, so 
Jinder starts saying that he looks constipated and all this. And the Singh brothers are making fun of uh, Shinsuke's entrance uh, yeah, and stuff. his theatrics or yeah. whatever. Because they were like rolling around the ring yeah. and stuff. And at this point, I was like, oh my God, this could be worse than the Alexa Bliss uh Bailey, but this, this is, is your, your life. life segment, or the Jack Gallagher and uh, Brian Kendrick. The, like it was, it was starting to move toward that yeah. territory. I, I don't know, Alexa Bliss Bailey thing. They, oh, I know, I know it was bad. That one, yeah. And then there's this one point where you get to see, uh, I guess Shinsuke oh, was he looking up, like scared or something like that. Mm-hmm. And Jinder was like, and this is the look he he gets when he sees Godzilla or something like that. <laughs> and you got like a bunch of people la- to laugh, and then. Jinder looks in the audience, he goes, oh, you think that's funny? And then he's like, this is the reason that Shinsuke shouldn't be the champion, because he's going to get the same treatment that I get from the fans. Yeah, well, he didn't even say that he shouldn't be. He said that this oh, is why, why he shouldn't want, want to be. That's it. Yes, you're right. So, but so yeah, that that kind of just, like, turned my whole feelings around of the yeah. promo. It, he, he did a good job. Yeah. It's, like, it, they took his one dimension and actually kind of swerved it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, because he... He was being a good heel mm. where he wants people to not like him. Where it's like a lot of the times when heels get heat, it's because they don't like it's not on purpose. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I got you. Yeah, so, yeah. Whereas like someone's trying to like do their thing to get heat. Yeah. To get heat. But mm. it's more of they just don't like how they're doing it instead of them doing things, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, he's he's doing the right, he's doing it right. Yeah. So, which is weird because he never would have thought that. So. No, and a lot of people really didn't like this segment. Really? Which, yeah. I was reading it online. I, was I, like, I thought it was good after you know. Yeah, after, after the it beginning. turned around, right? But a lot of the times, people like focus make, in on one thing and then, yeah, make an opinion right. before it's all said and done, mm-hmm. and then change their mind. Yeah. So that could be what what happened. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, it was a good. Yeah, yeah, it turned he turned it around, and yeah. uh, I give Jinder credit for being able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stayed focused. Yes. So uh, up next is another backstage segment. Mm-hmm. We have uh, <coughs> Owens giving directions to some guy. Yeah, I don't I, know who he was. I'm sure, he was some probably kind of a known person. He's probably some kind of or supposed to be some kind of assistant. Yeah. And. Uh, and this is how he's going to run the Kevin Owens show, because <laughs> that's what SmackDown's going to be known as from now on. Yeah. Um, he walks up to Sammy. Mm-hmm. I guess apparently they had wrestled in front of at an armory in, in front of like twenty or forty people or something like that. Yeah. And well, uh, that was back when they were touring in the yeah, in the Indies. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so they said that they made a promise that they'll never have to do this again, and or the that they're going to make it to the WWE and never have to do that again. Right. And then Kevin Owens said that I'm going to allow you to break that promise. <laughs> and then Sammy basically said, well, I'd rather work in front or wrestle in front of 40 people than wrestle for you. Mm-hmm. So that seems fair. Yeah. I don't know how good of a boss Kevin Owens would be anyway. Oh, so probably have good snacks though. That is true. <laughs> he knows his snacks. Yeah. Oh, man. And then uh, up next, we had the Usos defending their tag belts in the, what was it, Sin City Street Fight, yes. right? Yes, Sin the City Day. Street Fight. Um, yeah, so this is like the third or fourth time we've seen this match, and every match has been good. Yeah. The, the, the dynamic between the two has been very good. The, the street fight part was actually used. Yeah. Well, Xavier came out for the entrance and then went right back to the back. He just turned around. Oh, he went, wasn't? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, walked, I guess I missed that He part. walked to the uh, stage and turned around and went right to the back. Because I, I know he was out there when they won. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, and came back out. Okay. Yeah. I guess I just, I wasn't really looking for him during the match. I, yeah. Okay. So before we get into the match, I see the, the Usos come out, and they have the great look to themselves now. They've really established themselves. Uh-huh. Now, I really think they should still bring Roman back and put him with him and be like the Empire or something like that. And just it, would, have them it would work better now. And have them just be this heel faction that kind of runs SmackDown mm-hmm. once Roman does everything he does on Raw. I was just going to say... Just, they... It'll drop him down a little. He, they can still build him up, mm-hmm. but this will be 
a way where they can do it kind of under the radar. Yeah, I was going to say, this is not something that's going to happen soon. No. But it could happen yeah. at some point. Yeah. It would make sense. I, I think this, and this way you could, you know, even reunite Gallows and Anderson with AJ and have them feud with them, except the roles reverse, which I talked about maybe last week or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Because I, I, I just think it would be. The, the only problem with that is that would require the Usos to hold their momentum for a certain amount of time. Yeah, that's true, because sooner or later one of those teams are not going to be on TV. Yeah, because I, I don't really think... I don't know how well the Usos, if they're not champions or in the title picture, are going to be able to hold their own. Yeah, I guess I mean, that, that is true. Like, the Hardys, obviously not a good example, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're going to be relevant even if they're not in the title picture. Right. Whereas a team like the Usos are kind of like... Um, who's a good example? <clears throat> like the club yeah i guess so where they don't seem relevant when they're not yeah i mean they've been doing a decent job on well, raw right now the club's kind of being used in the title picture kind though. of yeah so that third team to just throw into the mix mm-hmm. to kind of change it up a little bit so it's not just the same yeah. old same and old. prior to um the hardys coming back they were always kind of like an afterthought even mm-hmm. when they were on tv right so that that's what I feel like the is gonna yeah. be the fate of the Usos, mm-hmm. but who knows? Yeah, but uh, yeah, they really utilized the the street fight aspect of the match. Yeah, they had what kendo stick, chairs, a table. At one one point, Kofi destroyed a kendo stick on mm-hmm. I think a Jay Usos yeah, back. One of one of them, yeah. Well, it was really both of them technically. Yeah, just finished it on one mm-hmm. of them, and then was it? kofi that launched the chair at oh one of he the chucked usos? the chair at one of the usos <laughs> yeah he was standing in the ring the uso was standing outside the ring and he just <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm like whoa yeah like i said it, it just really seemed like these both teams were really into this match mm-hmm. yeah um uh yeah uh and then that one sloppy part we talked about earlier yeah where Kofi went to jump what is it off the top rope right onto he did his trust fall yes um where he goes to land on opponents and then they catch him which is usually what happens mm-hmm. i think um and then they i guess th- go to throw him into the timekeeper area but the, he like lands on the like the, the barrier guard, yeah and then he falls down inside of the barrier yeah it was a weird spot it just yeah. didn't didn't look right so i think at this point uh, the Usos go back into the ring, mm-hmm. uh, and then Big E goes nuts, hits a bunch of belly to bellies, um, and then he. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and then uh, I think uh, the Usos ended up gaining momentum. Yeah, because they they kick they hit him with a bunch of super kicks. Yeah, that's, then they, they go for a frog splash mm-hmm. or not a fr- well. Yeah, like, they both went. They yeah. both hit a they hit a double super kick on Big E. Yes, and they both go up to the top top like they did to win the belts. Mm-hmm and uh sorry win the titles yeah and uh they went for a double frog splash but kofi gets up and pushes jay through the table that they had set up on the outside in the beginning of the match yeah and then kofi and biggie hit the midnight hour on jimmy for the win yeah i guess jimmy just jumped down yeah i think that's what it was yeah yeah because he was kind of looking and he was like Uh oh yeah yeah he had that look on his face like i'm gonna get you guys (laughs) and it didn't work yeah drooling out the mouth and you know all that good stuff yep and yeah. we said that uh how they won yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 and so the new day are the now four-time tag team champions yeah smackdown live twice right something like that yeah because they were two before yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah well they had that long reign yes so. <laughs> the first one was short and yeah. then the ridiculously long mm-hmm. one and then the two on smackdown yeah i heard something that they wanted to make them the most winning winningest i guess is the, mm-hmm. is the term uh, tag team well they want to take away they want to have control over i guess the record records yeah. they've been doing that a lot because mm-hmm. they did it with nikki because they took aj's reign right. away from her Which makes sense um i think cm punk's still, still the longest it. reigning so. modern champion that will change eventually i feel like and I know I said this the first time. I feel like Roman, if he comes out of WrestleMania 34 with the mm-hmm. title, It'll happen. that's when it's going to happen. It's not going to be Jinder Mahal? It's not going to be Jinder Mahal. <laughs> um, oh, man. It's, it's either going to be Roman or Seth 
or they could put AJ. Yeah. I don't but know. I don't see that being logical. No. For two reasons. A, he's older now. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, at some point in the near future, he's probably going to move to a part time or something like that. Or I mean, he can just still go right now. But. Or just not main eventing all the time. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's not a whole lot of people who can take that role. No. So I don't know. Uh, it's going to be one of those guys, mm-hmm. probably. Makes sense. Not gender. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, up next, we had the last of the uh, title matches mm-hmm. for the t- or for the night. Yep. Natalia versus Naomi. Yeah. So we come back from commercial, and both women are in the ring. Yeah, which is weird considering that Natalia's thing is her entrance. You mean Naomi. That's what I meant. Naomi's. Yes. Naomi's thing is her entrance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Natalia's thing is her cats. Yes. That's true. <laughs> so Carmelo is on a commentary with uh, James Ellsworth on a leash. Well, so, she said that things are going to be her way now. I, she did. So, uh, yeah, he was just uh, sitting behind her. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Hellsworth. Hey, he's kept his job. It's true. Longer it's, than anybody probably expected. He's been, it's been over, over a year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe not over a year, about a year. Yeah, maybe you're right. Because I th- when did AJ won the title at? No mercy last year. No, he had the title already. He won the title at Backlash, which was oh, the yeah, September yeah, pay per view. Right. Yeah. So it was after that mm-hmm. that he started hanging out with Dean, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what did you think of this match? It wasn't bad. I don't know. It wasn't as good as their SummerSlam match. Yeah. I still feel that Carmella and Natalia put on a better match last week. Yeah, like like we said last. But week, I think it, it might have just been the more surprise because we weren't expecting as man. much out of the match. You yeah, because Carmella really put on a yeah sure. a, a good show mm-hmm. for her for, at the very least. Yeah, so. absolutely. And we know Natalia is a good wrestler, and mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just it's it's almost harder to find a good opponent for Naomi because you kind of have to sell her moves well, and you know they're not really they're very unorthodox moves yeah that's the so thing. i think that's a lot to do yeah. with it she has a very interesting move set that's not mm-hmm. not easy to work with but uh, yeah i whatever. think that's fair yeah um, um but yeah natalia ends up winning after uh or f- from a sharpshooter now you yeah. only tapped out mm-hmm. obviously yeah natalia got knocked out of the ring and uh Carmella and I think Ellsworth as well got into uh, her face. Yeah. And then uh, Naomi went to, I guess she, what did she do like a cross body over? Yeah, she, she she hit Carmella and Ellsworth. Yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Natalia moved body. out of the way and she hit them with a cross body. And then Natty took Naomi and threw her into the ring post, which it looked like she made contact with, yeah. but she didn't. Yeah. Because when they zoomed on her after she tapped out, there was nothing on her head. But, uh, but yeah, and then she rolled her back in the ring and put her in the sharpshooter and that was all yep um yeah so i don't know where we're going from here i don't know if naomi is going to be out of the picture well still no, in it if they're no, going to set something up between her and carmella yeah, or... well no matter what there's still a month between now and hell in a cell yeah so the i don't think anything that happens now is yeah. a necessarily an indication of what's going to happen mm-hmm so we'll have to wait till next week. So had the New Day not won the titles, you think we might have seen a cash-in? Well, I, I, I figured we were going to have one title change. I, I figured that as well. I thought it was going to be this, actually. Yeah. So, But it's possible. But I, I also thought that, or think that the, the tag team hold. titles are easier to flop back and oh, forth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but... But I figured, like, since the May Young finals were tonight, last night, and everything, that they were going to make a big deal out of the women's, you know? Well, I, I honestly thought for a minute that uh, that was going to be the main event, in yeah. which case oh, I yeah, pretty yeah. much guaranteed right. a title change at yeah. the very least, but well, it was not the case. It's on Raw, it is. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but they, they kind of do that to begin with. You don't you don't yeah. see title changes on SmackDown nearly as often as you do on Raw. Um, No. What was the last? I mean, well, AJ won the belt, the U.S. title from Owens with Jericho. 
they, they had the triple threat. Remember when Jericho came? Oh out yeah, yeah. Okay, night? yes, yes. That but was after. Before that, might have been the tag titles. Yeah, it was with probably the, the tag... Wyatts and uh, American Alpha. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah, happen could, very often. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. But you, yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Um... Oh, then we uh, had a backstage segment yes. with uh, Aiden English was in the back singing, and then Kevin Owens comes up to him and goes. I want you to sing the lyrics to the new theme song of the Kevin Owens show. And then he does his thing. And yeah, that was that. <laughs> true. You know, I mean, you, you gotta, at least they're doing something with Aiden English. Well, yeah, it's, he's pretty much the SmackDown's drifter. Yeah, basically. Yeah. They have the same gimmick. It's mm. just they, their appearances are different. Yeah. That's really what it is. And uh, it's like a different type of heat they're getting. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> Uh, and then we get Dolph Ziggler again. Yeah, this was um, basically the same thing as last week, but Pretty much. with different people. Yeah. He uh, he does the Bailey entrance. <laughs> yes, that was weird. All right, so he comes out and does the Ultimate Warrior entrance. Bad taste? Dana Warrior in the crowd for the Mae Young Classic. Um, Just because know. of his gimmick is like, you know, someone just, I mean, it, it was true. Well... That, Ultimate War Out. was not a great in ring wrestler. And it's not a secret though. No, I know. So I don't I don't think so. No. I don't know. Just a lot of people were saying it was. So I'm just uh, curious on your I well it's hard to tell what the really, hell they're I didn't like, really think about it until after the fact. Yeah. But I don't even know what they're getting at with this Dolph Ziggler thing to begin with. This would have been the perfect time for Bobby Roode to come out. I guess. But um, he was standing in the ring waiting, and everybody, you know, a bunch of fans were screaming Bobby Roode. I was like, just, just let it happen already. Yeah. I, is, what do you think? That's what they're. I think so. That would make sense. Whose yeah. main thing in NXT was about his entrance? Yeah, I guess that's true. You know, I don't know. Just it, if that's not the case, it's really hard to tell exactly what's going on. Here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you know, he he goes into the ring and says that his whole. No one does this better than me, blah, blah, mm. blah. Anybody can do these stupid gimmicks, and, and yeah. then he just leaves. Yeah, he says uh, fans could care less, and so could he. Yep, so, drops uh, the microphone uh, and leaves yeah, the ring. That's it, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what, what we're getting at here. Hopefully, this will be one of those things that they kind of just forget about. Yeah, but, like, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right, so up next we have a tag team match. Mm-hmm. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin versus the Hype Bros. Yeah. With a Z. Z? That's not true. <laughs> They're it's just not. bros. Um, <laughs> They're just bros. Yeah. So um, we a- discovered something during this match. Yeah. Shelton Benjamin's a lot bigger than I remember him being. Mm-hmm. Dude's huge. Yeah. He is. I mean, I think they said that he put on, what, 20, 30 pounds maybe? Well, I'm not even talking about, like, muscular-wise. Yeah, He's really tall. tall. Yeah. So. Yeah, because, like we had talked about earlier is that mojo is a lot bigger than his competition in most matches mm-hmm. and shelton benjamin was yeah it's the same size if not a little bigger mm-hmm. than mojo it's true um so this this was a an expected match yeah i'll tell you what though their version of grand out al- al- amplitude amplitude is so much better than than the one with Jason Jordan. Because mm-hmm. it's basically Shelton Benjamin sets him up for a power bomb and Chad Gable continues it from it threw, the top yeah. rope. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. Um yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, after the match, Mojo goes over and shakes Gable and Benjamin's hands and uh he kind of goes, you know, Zach, you do the same now. And Zach's kinda like, screw this and just leaves the ring. Yeah. So um He is a he's a sore loser. Yeah. Gonna get that heel turn I've been talking about. It it would make sense. The only problem with that idea is the fact that Nothing's when the hell gonna is he gonna be on SmackDown? <laughs> yeah. So it's really it's so hard to predict things that are gonna happen when they don't have any time for anything. I know. I know. So but yeah. You could be right. I mean, just who knows how they're gonna work it. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh all right. Yeah, we had the big segment up next. Yep. Uh, this the came main, out a little out of left field. The main event, which yeah. was a talking segment. Which was fine, because then we got the uh, May Young Classic afterwards. So well, we yeah. A good match, which was main event caliber. Well, th- honestly, this no, this, it, this yeah, is fine any, yeah. any any day of the week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Especially when Vince has been on TV, what, twice? Twice this, this year. the second time since maybe the draft. 
Twice this year. Yeah. Um, oh. It might have been the second time since the draft yeah. as well. It, it, was he even there for the draft? He might not have been. He, I he, think he announced it. Yeah. I don't think he was there for it, though. Yeah. All right, so maybe it was even before that. But regardless, yeah. like you said, second time this year. And uh, so, you know, Owens comes out. And mm-hmm. He kind of talks a little about what he said earlier on. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vince Vince comes out and he, he kind of says that uh, Owens didn't fight back to Shane because uh, Shane was kicking his ass. Yeah. Well, yeah, because like you said earlier, Owens said that he respected authority. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did say that. He said, yeah. Yeah. You, you respect authority? I don't think so, Kevin. I've seen you before. Um, man, Vince looks uh, great for a 72-year-old man. It's true. Um, that's proven a little later on. So, <laughs> something I did notice is uh, Vince's voice sounds very hoarse like Jinder's. Oh, uh, interesting. I think they uh, had something in common there. Yeah, well, who the hell knows? <laughs> no. If the man says he doesn't do steroids, then I believe him. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Which man are we talking about here? Yeah, either way. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, at this point, mm-hmm. Vince says that, yes, I suspended Shane, but not for the reason that you think I did. Mm-hmm. I did. I suspended Shane because he didn't finish the job. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, so, he, he should have he put an end to you, yeah, basically, basically, is what he said. So, uh, advocating murder on TV. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Vince. Well, you know. Yeah. So, Vince was kind of like uh, telling Owens to sue, and he, he was basically like, you know, I, I've been in the courtroom probably uh, more times than anybody, mm-hmm. uh, and I've never lost. I it's believe true. that's what he said, right? He said he's never lost, yeah. uh, uh, I guess, a dispute yeah. of any kind. Mm-hmm. So he's like, go ahead, try to sue me. And I hope that you're on the line when I call your lawyer and yep. tell you, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the famous words of Vince. Yep. Um, so, And then he says that he's going to reinstate Shane. So we're going to get a match at Hell in a Cell between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. What a surprise. We never would have seen this coming. It's true. It, it didn't matter. So it, it's, it should be a very good match. Mm-hmm. That's going to be... Uh, it's going to actually let the two of them do what they do best. Mm-hmm. So. Beat the crap out of each other yeah. and themselves. Well, it's because they're both better... <laughs> Brawlers? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's fitting. Yeah. I just just the, the crazy spots. I was going to say, there's going to be like a whole whole mess of crap. Oh, yeah, so. it's... It'll, it'll be good. As, as long as somebody doesn't get seriously injured. I'm, I'm it's true, and that. Shane is more likely for Which, it to it's, happen. It's so weird that my view has like completely changed on that. Like like now I'll be like, oh, that looked terrible when I was you know oh, younger. Right. I was like, yeah, more. <laughs> yeah, well the the whole the perception as a whole for everybody has changed a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and then Owens. Uh, says that he wants Vince's word that nothing will happen to him after he beats a McMahon senseless. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then Vince says he has his word. Mm-hmm. Then, then they shake hands. Yep. And at that point, Kevin Owens rears back and then gives Vince a big headbutt. Busts him open the hard way. Yeah, it certainly looks Vince that hits way. the mat and all of a sudden you just see the a big blood. spot yep. of blood on his forehead. I was like, oh my God, there's a 70 year old man bleeding in the ring. Mm hmm um yeah and uh so what did this, the referees didn't even come out at this point right um like, they might have yeah. just at that one yeah. came out kevin what are you doing he's your boss <laughs> you can't hit him and uh owens kicks him in the ribs a couple of times yep and then uh ends it with a frog splash which yep. did not look very no, pretty. it did not look good no so but uh yeah they must have some uh some faith in kevin huh. and trust well that he's not gonna kill him I mean, yeah, but I mean to put him up against you know the McMahon's, the McMahon's in this type of yeah, that's true. I think I mean AJ and Shane had something, but mm-hmm. it never escalated to this. You know, yeah, it's true. And never got Vince involved. No, Not until now. It's, but yeah, but, but it was it was a very entertaining segment. Yeah, they they it had its highs were high and its lows were actually really the lows weren't. Eh, there. there were a couple of them. What with. No, just no. The show is. Over. Oh, I was yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. say, I'm like that segment was great. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I have no complaints. Yeah, about the that the segment. the show itself was good. Yeah, not. I I think Raw was better. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, um, I had 
watched or I have already watched 205 Live and and the May Young Classic. So unless NXT is like really bad, I must say this is a very solid week. Yeah. For uh for wrestling in yeah. the WWE. So. I would agree with that. Yeah. So um yeah. Well, this was our SmackDown review. Yep. If you liked what you see here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.